Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're going to service this specialized Langster. We're going to replace the bottom bracket on this. We're going to replace the free hub. We're going to fully service and detail this bike and really bring this up absolutely beautifully. You'll see this bike really pops out when it's all cleaned up. So you can see here we've got this lovely Shimano chain on this bike. It's not too badly worn. It has got a little bit of wear in it but it's an eighth chain so it's a nice strong sturdy chain and with no gearing on this bike there's plenty of life in this chain yet and as you can see it's a wonderful chain so we don't want to be replacing that too soon so we'll clean up that chain we'll get the bike entirely apart now it's similar to any other service really we take the bike apart get everything off it clean the components that we feel need cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner and then re-lubricate all the moving parts to make sure they're absolutely spot on with this bike, the customer had reported that the bottom bracket had a little bit of wear in it. He, he was aware that there was something not quite right with the bottom bracket. So we initially removed that to investigate and we did actually find that on this one, the bearing on the non-drive side there, you can see the rusty water on that where it actually the bearings had started to just break down on themselves. And so this clearly needed a new bottom bracket and it was actually the non-drive side that had the wear in it. So we take out the cups so we can clean down the threads, take off the brakes. Brakes are always one of the points of a bike that really always needs servicing because you get a lot of build up of debris from the spinning of the tires. It will always pull up at that top point and then run into that brake and you can see there the debris is built up on that brake. So that's well due a service now, even on a bike of this nature. Those components really do need a good service. Take the bottle cage off as well because we're going to actually lubricate the bolts on that one. So now we've decided what's going in the ultrasonic cleaner. In the instance of this bike there was no derailleurs so it was quite a routine simple clean down. So our ultrasonic cleaner has a water soluble degreaser in it. I run that for about 15 minutes for parts like this with no heat. Just wash down the parts afterwards, wash off that degreaser. The pedals didn't go into that, they sat outside of the degreaser so I just wash those down so that we don't disturb any of the greases in the pedals because the pedals were absolutely fine and didn't need any work and then we just use our lubricants off our lubricant stand there so we're using a nice thin oil on the pivot point and a little bit of silicon grease on the slider for the spring on that brake there and now we're just going to wash down the bike so initially I'm just using a soapy wash and I'm using our big softy brush you can buy those on our website so we just wash this bike down now that helps agitate all the dirt on the bike and then I will dry down that frame with a microfiber towel before I go through our polishing routine. So you can see that we do things like the saddle, all the frame, handlebars, and then we just dry that down with a nice microfiber towel. That will really lift off that dirt, lift off that water before we polish the bike. So now I'm just going to use our super resin polish. This is the Auto Glim range that we also sell on our website. It's a nice creamy oil and you can see there it'll really get the marks off your frames it works wonders on bikes really it can really bring you a shine that you would never have expected from your bike or that you've long since forgot the bike ever had from new but it's a lovely creamy polish it dries nicely it buffs off well and you can see how nice this frame begins to come up you can see that reflection in the paint there it's just a joyous polish to use really i always enjoy that part now we've got a little bit of a mark here on the frame a little bit of rub there from the tire so we actually produce these vinyl sheets here we do these in various colors blues blacks whites matte colors gloss colors clears etc and you can see we've got various different shapes there and i use these for detailing up bikes so i'm just going to pick one of our shapes there so i'm going to use a little circle and i'm just going to pop that on the frame over the wear we actually did this on both sides there so that now the tire will rub against that and the paint shouldn't deteriorate anymore we're doing a discount on these vinyl sheets. Use the code SPECIALIZED15 at checkout to get 15% off. We'll put the code and the link in the description for you to take a look at. Next up, we're gonna use the ceramic spray. This is a lovely way of getting that final bit of gloss on your bike, which means that mud, debris, and even water will just glide off this frame moving forwards. We're also gonna change the free hub on this bike. It was a little bit worn, and the rider had said that he felt he could just do with maybe one tooth larger. So the original free hub that was on this bike was a 17 tooth. We actually changed that to an 18 tooth just so that it would give him a little bit of an easier ride than the gearing that he originally had on the bike. So we're just going to put a little bit of copper slip on the threads of that before we put the free hub on. So on goes the free hub. We then torque that up correctly so that we know that that's absolutely solid on there. And then I'm also going to turn the tire 
So as the logo to the tire is over the valve, it's just an aesthetic thing that I like to do, but it also helps you to identify where a puncture was within that tire. Should you get punctures moving down the line, you kind of know where your valve was in relation to the tire in relation to the puncture. So I always like to line up my logos on the tires with the valve in the wheel and it just looks nice. I mean, having that logo over there, it's just so much nicer than it being randomly around the side of the frame. Again, a little bit of copper slip on the threads for the bottom bracket, which we've now cleaned those threads up in that cup as well. And then we'll get that new bottom bracket in there. All the greases you see in these videos, in these syringes, we also sell those on our website. So do check those out. It's currently the only way we can finance our YouTube journey. Simon works incredibly hard on these videos for very, very little really. So do check out our website and give us a little bit of support that way if you can. Cop slip on the thread to the bottom bracket there as well. And then I also use a little bit of general purpose grease there on the taper of the bottom bracket. And then we put in the bolts that hold on the chain set there. And then we torque those up just to make sure they're absolutely spot on. So both sides and we're quite happy there. And then we'll get the brakes on. So again, copper slip on the threads that will stop those binding. And you always want to put plenty of copper slip on the actual bolt for these because you do get debris build up inside those forks. But we've got a little trick there that we'll show you that will save some of that debris that you get inside the bolt hole for the front brake. So get both brakes on, everything all as it should be. And then we will adjust up those brakes. Again, thumb adjusters, they're all lubricated. I like to lubricate the threads on those because they'll bind gradually over time. And then we're beginning to get the wheels on now. Front and rear wheel, looking absolutely beautiful. On goes that lovely chain. I mean, look at the way that comes up with an ultrasonic cleaner. It looks as good as the day it left the factory now. So we're very, very happy with the way that chain came up. And I also lubricate the threads there for any accessories that are on the bike because they're very prone to binding, especially if you've got stainless steel screw into an aluminium riv nut. Check the brakes. As you can see, everything's running smoothly. And then we torque up the bike. We actually released the brakes because these bolts we needed to release the cable a little bit to make sure that these were correctly torqued and as you can see both levers were very very loose on this bike so i was actually quite glad that i did that but we're now running through with the torque wrench so we do the cockpit including the brakes and the stem line up that logo there on the bearing cap because i like to line up those logos they'll often turn and people don't realize that you can actually reline them up after you put the tension on the bearing and then the little trick I just mentioned, we're just going to put one of our vinyl detailing stickers just over this hole. Again, they're on the sheet to make sure that you can keep that hole nice and clean so that you should be able to remove that front brake in the future moving forwards. And again, we continue talking through the bike, getting everything absolutely spot on. You can see there another loose bolt and the saddle again, another little tweak on that one where it just needed torquing correctly. So we just run right the way through the bike and I'm now beginning to know that I'm almost there. I'm just going to lubricate up that lovely chain, lubricating the rollers to make sure that there's plenty of oil inside the rollers. You don't need to lubricate the plates and everything. Just get them rollers nice and lubricated. And as you can see, beautiful bike, but what a huge difference we've made to this one with this service. It looks cracking. It looks lovely and shiny. Everything's working. This will be a thrill to ride. Single speed bikes are always a joy to ride. And I think this rider will enjoy this one moving forward. So if you have enjoyed this, please do subscribe, drop a comment in the comments below, and we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.